All right, what is up, guys? It's Storm back here with another video, and in this one, I am bringing you a story about that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Now, technically, this is a part three, so if you want to go see the first two parts, those links will be down in the description below. But before we begin, if you like the content you're seeing, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. I mean, they're all free, so why not? If you want some dope channel merch, the link will be down in the description below. And if you want to see more of me, go check out my other channels and go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which will all be linked down below. But without further ado, why don't we just dive right on in. Rimuru had lost everything and everyone he cared about. All of it. It was all gone. And for that, he would get his revenge upon the one responsible. He already ended that scum Gazel Dwargo and destroyed the worthless armed nation of Dwargon. He still wanted more though. He wanted to completely annihilate all that were involved in the destruction of his home and the deaths of his friends. No, his family. His next target was the Kingdom of Falmouth. Flying through the sky, Rimuru had a dark and twisted smile on his face. He couldn't wait to destroy everything in that kingdom and end all of those worthless, good-for-nothing humans. Then to atone for their sins. He would absorb them into his own being to increase his strength to the next level and take on the threat he wanted to end personally, the filthy demon lords. Rimuru eventually arrived at the kingdom of Falmouth. He came to a stop and was completely still in the sky over the kingdom. He looked down and watched as the humans went about their daily lives, unaware of what was about to occur. Rimuru readied the attack he was going to use, and after a few minutes, he unleashed it. Rimuru unleashed Megiddo on the citizens and everyone inside the kingdom. <laughs> uh, Rimuru couldn't help but laugh as he saw these good-for-nothing humans being exterminated like the insignificant beings they were. If they wanted a monster, Rimuru would not only show them, but this entire world, what a true monster is. Bodies upon countless bodies dropped to the ground dead. Men, women, children. It didn't matter. They all deserved to die in Rimuru's eyes. Minutes passed, and it appeared as if most of the kingdom had already been taken care of. All that was left was the king who Rimuru would personally take care of, and any stragglers who might have survived the initial attack. Rimuru flew down to the king and started to walk towards the king's castle. Bodies were everywhere, but Rimuru paid them no mind. A knight suddenly appeared and yelled, You! You're the one who did this! Rimuru responded, So what if I am? What are you going to do about it, you worthless human scum? The knight, taken aback, yelled, You killed everyone I knew and loved. For that, I'm going to kill you. In the blink of an eye, Rimuru appeared next to him and whispered, Then you know what it feels like to lose everyone. So, we're the same. And for that, I'll let you join them. Before the knight even knew what happened, he fell to the ground dead. Rimuru eventually made his way into the castle and that's when he came into contact with the other worlders. Rimuru told them to get out of his way, but that was when one of them gloated. Ha! So you must be the leader of that worthless monster nation. Too bad it's gone. I had a lot of fun there. Especially with those two pretty monsters. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed my time with them. Hearing these words caused Rimuru to remember that nightmare scene. Shuna and Shion dead, having been violated. In a dark voice, with a look of pure hatred on his face, Rimuru spoke. So, it was you. Nice limbs you have there. You won't need them anymore. In a split second, the otherworlder scum dropped to the floor. His limbs, gone. What? What? Before he could even register what was going on, his head was ripped off and in Rimuru's hand. The other two were completely shocked, and as Rimuru crushed the head into a bloody pulp, he quickly dealt with the other two. With those pests out of the way, Rimuru continued on in the castle, killing whoever survived, until he made his way to the king. You! You took everything from me! Why? Tell me, you worthless waste of a soul! 
Rimuru yelled in anger. The king, fearful for his life, begged. Please, spare me. I said answer me, old man. Rimuru yelled once more. The king, realizing that this might be the end, did something he would later regret. He laughed. <laughs> oh, you worthless monsters. All of you should die. I loved giving that order as it benefited this entire world. The king looked down to see a hole in his chest. With blurry vision, he looked up and saw Rimuru with a bloody hand and the king's heart in that hand. The king coughed up blood, and as he stumbled over, the king spoke his final words. <laughs> the world will come together to end your evil. The ruler of the kingdom of Falmouth then dropped to the floor dead. Rimuru looked at his corpse then as he dropped the heart to the ground. He told the deceased king, let them try. Rimuru then walked out of the castle, having finished his business. Afterwards, he proceeded to absorb every corpse in Falmouth, and this in turn, started the process of turning Rimuru into a demon lord. Rimuru fell asleep for three days, and as he was asleep, one human who had remained, a certain mage who could use nuclear magic, scurried his way out of the kingdom to warn the rest of humanity about this threat. As Rimuru awoke, he felt his body changed and felt more powerful with new abilities. Rimuru was still in Falmouth, and as he flew into the sky, he looked on as he unleashed a devastating attack that wiped out the kingdom off the face of the planet. Nothing was left, and as Rimuru flew off, smiling, he moved on to his next goal, to end the Demon Lords. I stay.